Welcome to the Franchise Woman Podcast, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships forged. I'm Rebecca Monet, CEO and Chief Scientist at Zorical Profiles, along with my co-host, community advocate, speaker, author, and entrepreneur, Tracy Kawa. So Tracy, we have a really interesting show today. Our special guests are Ari O'Brien and her husband, Jason O'Brien. In 2013, Ari and Jason dipped their toes in the exhilarating pool of business ownership, co-founding Red Rock Franchise Ventures, a franchise consulting brokerage firm based in Las Vegas. Since 2019, they have channeled their expertise and experience into nurturing numerous emerging franchisors and franchise consulting, creating a legacy as relationship specialists with a get it done now mindset and ceaseless sense of urgency. For Ari and Jason, their business boils down to a single simple passion, to empower current and future franchisors and building a team of thriving franchisees. So Ari acts as chief development officer and Jason acts as CEO of Red Rock. They make a dynamic duo and I'm thrilled to have you on the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. So Ari and Jason, you are obviously a beautiful couple. You you live together, you work together. Other than wanting to know the secret of that success, how did the two of you meet? Yeah, the great question. Um, so kind of an interesting story. I was involved in corporate America and I was a, um, a regional director for a restaurant chain out of um, Southern California, out of the West Coast. And I had a business trip that was scheduled for Denver, Colorado. That was one of the markets that I oversaw. And so I went out there to, to meet with the team, see how things were going and um, get a chance to you know speak with my district manager and you know see how things were going for her. And when I arrived in Denver, shortly after I arrived in Denver, um, the district manager came up to me and said, hey, you know, our representative from U.S. Foods is going to be coming down uh, to take a tour of the location, you know, meet employees and so on. And I had known Ari literally just over the telephone. We had had a number of conversations, never met her in person, um, was excited I was going to get the chance to meet her. And I will never forget that day. I was in the restaurant, you know, working with the team and she came walking through the door, you know, kind of like she owned the place, said hello to everybody. And it was um, just this breath of, of fresh air. And um, she was, she was new to, to our company at the time. She had just taken over our account, but um I'll tell you, I mean, the the, um, the level of service that we got from her at, from a sales perspective was absolutely incredible. And next thing you know, we're falling in love and getting married and off and starting a family and so on and so forth. So, yeah. That's beautiful. Yep. Ari, okay, tell us more. Tell us oh. more. <laughs> Did you see him as handsome when you met him? Did you feel a spark? Was it something that grew over time? I want to know about the romance. I did. Yeah. I mean, we, we hit it off right out of the gate, got to, you know, hang out there at the restaurant. Actually, my mom came down. She was meeting me for dinner that night. So he got to meet my mom like that first day. It was so <laughs> funny. Forgot about and it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just, uh, it kind of just took off from there. And, and yeah, like, you know, we just, we have so many things in common, like, you know, personal and then obviously professionally. And it just, you know, it just kind of all aligned and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been amazing. And, you know, October is our, we were married in 2010. So we're coming up on 14 years and yeah, it's been, it's been a great ride. It really has. Wow. So when did franchise enter the picture? Yeah. Yeah. That was um, uh, literally in 2013. Um, You know, I, I was just in that position you know, had this, had this great job in corporate America, but I just wanted more. I really did. I, I wanted more and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to dive into. Had some experience um, with franchising. I've worked for different franchisors literally since the time I was uh, a kid. My first job was with a franchise. And um, it was, it was one of those things I, I wanted to break away from corporate America, saw something online about franchising and franchise consulting. And, and that was it. Um, so yeah, started in, uh, it was actually April of 2013. 
as a consultant, as a franchise consultant, helping people find the right business, right? Correct. Yeah. As a franchise consultant. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He came to me and he was like, I found this opportunity and I was like, oh boy, what is this? You know, I was thinking it was one of those like multi-level type businesses, you know? And I was like, what is this? Like, what do we, you know, I mean, you just like that in 2013, I know franchising was a thing because it's been something forever, but you, it just wasn't what it is today. Right. You know, it's, it's evolved so much. And so I was like, well, what do we do? Like, what's our role? What do we have to, you know, what is involved in all of this? And so I was just, I was so skeptical because you don't know what you don't know. And so it was just one of those things where we just kind of, you know, we kind of just threw all the balls in the air and we were just kind of seeing what was going to fall where it was going to fall. We jumped into it and it, it was we amazing did. like how quickly we fell in love with it. And I, I, I really think that it comes down to the people. I mean, just the people we have met in the franchise in the industry, whether it's franchise sure. doors, franchisees, franchise consultants, franchise attorneys, it's just, it's a really neat community. And um, we've made so many friends, but we did, we fell in love with it right out of the gate. Um, it's just an incredible industry. Yeah. It, it really is. And we hear this story often guys of, an accidental coming into franchising, but then within no time, loving it, can't imagine doing anything, but, and a big part of it is those relationships and the sense of community and how one helps with one another. All right, let's, yeah. let's continue this story though. I got to get this whole piece all together. <laughs> so you're working as consultants, helping prospective franchisees find right fit uh, businesses but then you made another, you know, leap. And then you had to talk Ari into that one too. So when did Red Rock come about and what was the aha moment that you said, okay, this is bigger than I thought we need to do something else. We need to add to our services. Sure, absolutely. So yeah, after being in the industry for a decade and, and having an opportunity to work on the franchise or side of the business as well, um, it just, it did, it kind of hit me. Um, that there, there really is a, a, a need for emerging brands. And it's something I've been very, very passionate about um, my entire life, emerging brands. I have always worked for an emerging brand. I mean, literally the first job I had at, at 15 um, was at a frozen yogurt shop, which is the first location for, for a major um, franchise organization. So I've always been on that forefront and I've learned, you know, literally through the, the, the founders of those organizations how to build a company. And so from a very young age, I've been exposed to it. I've been watching it. And then after, you know, getting involved in franchising, I mean, Ari, Ari and I just came to the realization that there's so many great emerging brands out there, fantastic emerging brands with fantastic mm -hmm. owners, and they just need that little extra help. You know, maybe they've, um, they've, you know, built this amazing business. They know it inside and out. Um, but it's a whole nother level, you know, taking that business to market and, and being able to, um, you know, find qualified candidates and so on. And we just saw that there was a big space uh, missing in that arena. So we jumped into it and it has been, um, it's been amazing ever since. Yeah. Is that what you think the um, biggest challenge to emerging brands is like finding qualified candidates and taking their business to market? Are there any other challenges that they face you know, that are kind of themes across the board? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I think um, a, a lot of the challenges, you know, that we see out there is, you know, the franchisors, again, they built this great system, but it's just, you know, getting their concept visible. There's a mm -hmm. lot of different franchisors out there. There's so many different concepts that, um, you know, especially when you're small and you're just starting out, you get lost in that shuffle. So being able to, finding a way to bring those concepts to the forefront, I think was was a big part of it. I mean, what do you say, Ari? Yeah, I think that is absolutely accurate. I think the other component that really um, a lot of emerging brands face is that they don't have a process. They just come to market and they just put the brand out there and they don't have like, they don't set the expectations. And so for a consultant, they really need a defined process as part of what they offer. And without that, it's just a missing component. And I feel like a lot of times without that, um, you know, they, they fall off the radar. And so it's, 
well, I don't know why that, that candidate seemed like they loved everything about what I offered, but then they went dark on me and I don't know why. And so a lot of times we help them define that process, put something, you know, so it's, you know, a step-by-step um, and, and that changes the game for a lot of, um, for a lot of brands because the candidate can see that they're organized and they know how they want to go to market and they know all the steps that are needed in, in order to get to that end point where they're signing and paying. I haven't thought about that, but you're right. Emerging mm-hmm. franchisors typically don't have a good sales development process in place. Exactly. And if you're choosing to go to broker organizations, um, yeah. they need to come across as even though we're merging, we got our act together, right? So a broker is exactly. comfortable making that uh, introduction. Yeah. So, so when you guys were working as brokers yourself, was this a pain point you saw frequently? Um, and what would happen then? Would you just back off of that kind of franchise or that wasn't prepared and didn't have the processes in place? That's a great question. Um, we did come across that quite often. And our our approach to that was, how can I help? You know, I mean, Ari and I, we love to help people. And, you know, you, you'd see these emerging brands coming in and, and they their process just wasn't set up correctly to for effective sales. And so we would, we'd jump in there and, and help them a lot of, well, every time pro bono, um, offering that advice and suggestions. And, and we did, we helped a number of brands grow that way. Yeah. I love the enthusiasm. Me too. Oh, thank you. I, I, I'm so we, curious, like, what is it for each of you that gets you the most excited and the most jazzed in your roles? Like, what is that one point that just does it for you? Yeah, for, for me, it's it's absolutely growth. That's why I've, I think I've always been on the emerging uh, brand side of things my entire career. Um, there's just something addictive to me, to see a brand go from nothing from one location to grow to over a hundred and to see the, the employees, the people of that brand grow with it. To me, there's just nothing more exciting about that. So it is, it's a bit of an addiction. I would, I would say, you know, for me, I'm addicted to growth. I absolutely am. That's great. Yeah. What about you, Ari? Uh, so I think for me, yeah, I mean, definitely the same, but also because I'm so integrated with the candidates and I'm working with them on a daily basis. So really like the relationship part of it, that's, you know, that's where I really thrive. And so, you know, I'm, I'm working with these candidates and they're sending me pictures from their vacation and their families and they feel that connection to me. And it just makes it, it's so rewarding because you are, I mean, you're, literally changing people's lives and like setting the stage for the future for, you know, when they talk to me, they get so personal with me to the point where they're, you know, talking to me about what their future looks like with having their kids maybe take over the business one day or something like that. It's just such a personal experience. So that I think would be the most rewarding aspect for me. Oh, nice. Growth and relationship. So beautiful. Okay, I'm curious if you're willing to share stories. What is the most interesting, the craziest, the funniest, most rewarding <laughs> clients that you've had, whether it's a franchise or a client or a prospective franchisee? Tell me a story. Oh my goodness. I, I She's I putting us on the spot. Do you have one? Okay, he's and got one. That one that comes to mind for me was um, a candidate that I had, and I, I was pitching a, a crime scene um, cleanup concept to him. And um, this oh, yeah. guy, he did. He fell in love with the thing. And, I mean, we hung up the call from that first intro call. About five minutes later, my phone rang. I wasn't able to get to it. I was on another line. But I ended up listening to his message. And when I played back that message, the excitement that that came from his voice and basically that message was, Jason, I'm all in. I'm doing this. Let's go. I'm going to build this business up. I'm going to make it amazing. Da, da, da. I mean, a lot of the things that we we do here, you know, that excitement just comes out with people. We love hearing about the, that, that. But um, this individual, his name is Rick from North Carolina. Um, he he did. He jumped in. He he jumped in and, and just smoked it. I mean, literally um, within a couple of years had uh, built his business into a multimillion dollar business. And it was just incredible to 
to see that that level of excitement from him in the very very beginning and and just for him to carry it all the way through that was a really good experience well not to mention he was a corporate executive he was so burnt out i mean he was like he was literally teetering on the edge like he was you know just he was done like he had had wasn't he in like pharmaceutical sales or something like yeah, that totally. he was just working a ton of hours and he was burnt out and he just didn't want to do it anymore and he just wanted to own his own business and be able to decide like his own fate like he his wife even said to jason like a year down the road like you've changed our life like literally changed our life we can't, i can't even imagine if he had stayed doing what he was he was doing he probably would have like suffered a massive stroke he was like stressed beyond belief so that's emotional i can feel it yeah. in your voice too uh ari um it it really is like finding your forever spouse right it's it's yeah. fall, but it is a falling in love process where now you can be fully 100 percent yourself and yeah. build and grow something for your family and uh, the lifestyle that you want to create you're you're introducing them to their business matches so it's exactly. got to be it's got to be rewarding um and then to stay in touch with them and watch them uh grow so okay i want to get clear on what you are doing with your franchisors and with your your consultants how is that relationship and how does red rock play in all of that yeah, I mean, you know, the name of our company is Red Rock Franchise Development. Development is in the name of our, our company, and that is what we are all about. Um, so on the franchisor side of things, um, that's that's what we're looking to do is, is to help franchisors grow through development. So we're not a sales organization. Our goal is not to come in and just sell that franchise. Our goal is to come in, offer that assistance, help with the sales. I mean, we'll do the sales. We'll get it there but also to, to, to develop that franchisor so that eventually they can do it on their own. I mean, you're only going to be an emerging brand for so long. You eventually get to that level where you break free from that. We want to teach those franchisors how to be effective in their sales, in their development, in their onboarding of, of, of franchisees um, and helping them grow. Um, the same, it's the same token on the franchise consultant side. You know, we have a lot of relationships with franchise consultants from around the country, Many of those consultants, you know, Ari and I have personally trained or mentored um, over the years. And, you know, it, it, it is, it's just, it's literally just kind of giving back. Um, there was a lot of people that I learned from when I was a consultant. And that's what Ari and I want to do is we want to help consultants. We want to um, further their development, make them the best they can possibly be. And yeah, hopefully they have a relationship with us. They'll, they'll, they'll come with us and they'll, they'll work our brands. If not, not a big deal. Um, we want to make them successful in the franchise space. Just, I think it's just about making the franchise industry that much better. And that's what we're about. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Easy peasy. Um, what do you think the struggles that a broker goes through? You mentioned with the franchise or the merging, what are some struggles that the broker deals with where you're offering training support, nurturing for them also? Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about that because, you know, we do, we we hear from consultants um, all the time that are just getting into this, um, or maybe they've been a consultant for a couple of years and they had their stride and maybe, you know, they need help kind of refocusing and, you know, kind of figuring out how to pivot and, you know, maybe change their approach because you have to stay ahead of what's going on. There's so many things changing in franchising all the time. And um, so, you know, Part of what we do is, you know, we we really kind of help them figure out like where their strengths are in regards to, you know, what are some industries that you could see yourself doing? Because if you're pitching something and you don't believe in it, you, you can't you can't sell it. You can't. And so, you know, really there's while there's for franchisors, it's so overwhelming to see the amount of consultants and broker networks and all the things going on vice versa it, it's the same when you're getting into this as a consultant it's like where do i start like mm -hmm. how, there's so many brands what do i do do i have to learn about every one of them and it's like 
find a couple industries that you love or that you can see yourself in and, and try to narrow it down that way. Mm -hmm. You know, have some conversations, get to know the person that's representing that brand. Find out, Jason always says, like, get the story, like, pitch it like it's your own. Because the candidate's going to hear that in your voice and your delivery. They'll, they'll like grasp onto that and just, they'll be like, yes, I want the next step. What is it? When you hear from somebody, what are our next steps? Like that shows that, you know, you've, you know, delivered that story the way that the CEO and the, you know, the founder wanted, intended it for it to be, you know, delivered to somebody. So I think, you know, in that regard, you know, it's, it's, it kind of goes hand in hand. And so, you know, what we do and what we're like so focused on is bridging that gap and just kind of bringing the two pieces together, like a puzzle, you know, that's so great. It's all about communication, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It is. Communication and, he, and, and being present, you know, I, I think that's just a big part of it. Being present yep. with those franchise consultants, showing them that they, that, that we care you know, a lot of times, you know, they'll go back to um, their network or, or you know, um, another consultant, try to get, you know, some advice or some information and, and they, they get an answering machine or they've got to leave a message or send an email and, and wait a couple of days to get a response. Um, we want to stay right on top of that. You know, if somebody has a question about franchising, we're here to answer. We, we love the space. So, I mean, we can talk about it all day long. Um, definitely. We can see the passion, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. exciting. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I was actually a little earlier going to ask you what makes you guys, I, I think I see it, but I want, you know, our whole audience to hear it also from your mouths. Like what makes your franchise development ma- company different maybe from another franchise development company? I, I would say it, it literally comes down to the people focus. We're, we're just, we're so into that. It's not about the dollars. Um, Ari and I, we just have always been this way. It's just our personalities. We do not put um, a lot of emotion in, into uh, into the dollars. So we don't look at it that way. We look at it as we're trying to build something. We're trying to teach and educate people on franchising. And, um, you know, I mean, that's where I think it really comes out. You know, um, it's all about taking care of the people. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And I just literally had this conversation with somebody yesterday because we were talking about just sales in general. And like, you know, I, I said, I'm like, all sales is, is really, that's, it's just, it's relationships. It's just building relationships. And I think that people just don't realize that until they can, they really get into it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I look at it this way, you know, if, if you, if you're a franchise consultant or a franchisor and you're trying to sell your concept, to a friend or family member that trusts you, that you've known your whole entire life, maybe it's a it's a parent or a brother or a sister, that person's going to feel comfortable with you. They're going to to pop more than likely move forward. It's the same thing on this end. You know, when we get a candidate, it's um it's 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 a sincere approach to to really get to know who that candidate is. We want to build that relationship with them. Um, because if if we're able to do that, we know we can find the right opportunity for them the right um the right concept for them and um i think that's where it, where it really comes in to play you know i agree and obviously in the, with our business with oracle profiles we're all about understanding that candidate inside and out and building that relationship because the more we know about them the better we are at putting them in the right business and we're in such a high tech world today and we're in a fast paced world today where I think sometimes we don't take that time to build that kind of relationship that you're talking about. One where I'm going to make, you know, write a check for a very big amount of money to buy a business. That's a relationship that's built on incredible trust in my consultant, in the franchisor that I'm uh, considering. So uh, Ari, I'm going to throw this question to you. What advice would you give someone who's wanting to learn how to be better at building those relationships? Um, I would say probably the biggest component is communication. I mean, I think that that's definitely 
a lost art. And I think that that is a complaint that we hear from so many consultants is they don't get the proper communication that they need um, from the franchise or for whatever reason, they're just, you know, they're, you know, maybe the response time is low or they're not answering the phone or whatever, you know, it's that communication is what builds trust and really, you know, shows somebody that, you have a vested interest in their business and what they have going on. Everyone's busy. Everybody's answering a million emails. They're on Zoom calls. They're answering text messages. I mean, there's always a million things going on, but just that, hey, I got your message. I'll get back to you by the end of business today or something like that, just to show them. So I'd say communication is probably the biggest thing that people lack when they're having a hard time building a relationship. Jason, you have anything yeah. else you want to add to that? I think she completely nailed it a hundred percent. It is, it's that communication. Um, and that's the thing is, you know, that's what we want to do is teach the franchisors, you know, how does a consultant want to be communicated with? And being that we were consultants for so long, I mean, we know exactly what that, what that level looks like. So yeah, I think she nailed it. Communication. I would agree. Yeah. I love this. I remember years ago um, taking some kind of course. I don't remember what it was now, but I remember them talking about art. And that was, you know, kind of a foundation for building relationships. Um, and of course, the the A stands for affinity, right? Have some kind of affinity see what we have in common, see what we both love, building that kind of af uh, affinity. And then the R was about, uh, you know, respect, where you kind of see each other's perspective when you're a little different. And then the C was the communication, and that builds these longer, deeper, more meaningful relationships. Because this is not a wham-bam, right? This isn't a transaction. This takes a period of time to move people uh, through other process. So I'm wondering if I can get more personal. When you look back at your lives, can you see a book you read, uh, a mentor you had, a situation that happened that had you look at the world differently, like an epiphany or a motto or something of that nature? Can you think of something in your life that really has influenced you uh, today? Absolutely. I mean, the very first thing that comes to my mind was um, my my first, I would say, real career, you know, out of college and so on. It was in the restaurant industry with a company called Pickup Sticks and the founder of that company, Charles Zhang, who's a huge, huge um, uh, mentor to me, um, taught me everything I know about business. I remember what he said to me when I was really, really young. I was I was 27. I just had gotten promoted from a general manager to an uh, area supervisor and he said to me, he goes, you know, Jason, I want you to know how lucky you ha have it and how much opportunity you have uh, ahead of you. He'd said that he had come to this country, not speaking English, only had $20 in his pocket. And he started 15 floors below ground zero and built his way up. And he told me, he said, he looked right at me. He said, Jason, you're 27. You're young. You're starting at ground level. You can go wherever you want to go. Where do you want to go? And I did. I told him I want to be in your spot one day. And um, it took me a while, but I eventually got there. But that always, always stuck with me. And his whole philosophy regarding people is something that I've instilled in every business I've ever been a part of. It's something we instill today in Red Rock Franchise Development. And um, it just, uh, I'll never forget it. Just um, a true inspiration and um, somebody that that really helped me learn the ropes growing up. Wow. Yeah. I love you, that. Ari. You know, I mean, mine is not as impactful as Jason. And, you know, like, he, I never got to meet Charlie. Like, um, Jason talks about him all the time, like, from the time that we met. And so, you know, like... I never, like I said, I've never been in like a management type executive role. You know, I've always been in like sales. And so, you know, a lot of stuff that I've learned in business, it has, I know it's so corny and so cliche, but it has been from Jason. Like he has taught me, like he has taught me about like 
you know, how to run a business. And I couldn't, I never envisioned myself as a business owner. Like it, I just always assumed I would work for somebody else. And so like all the things that he talks about, Charlie made such an impact on his life. And he talks about him all the time and just says, you know, all the things and he'll, he'll constantly go back to that. You know, Charlie would say this and, you know, so it, it just, it's kind of like, it's kind of come full circle. I feel like for us, because, I never really had a mentor like that. Um, and so I look at Jason as kind of the person that's, you know, helped me and guided me through this franchise, you know, whirlwind, I guess, you know, so. Nice. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Yes. You know, uh, Tracy, it reminds me of Esther that we spoke to the other day and the absolute love and an admiration she had for her husband. I really do believe this is why relationships are so important. Marriage in particular is that you each bring something to the table. And when you love and adore the other and respect what they bring to the table, instead of trying to change them to be more like ourselves, right? Then um, they can be fully themselves and you can be fully yourselves. And together, look what you have created right yeah Jason, you probably couldn't have done it without uh, ari and ari without jason it really we really are yeah. yeah and they go hand in hand i think you know when you really break it down marriage is just like running a business in so many different ways you know i mean decisions that are made and and so on it really really is so um, I don't know I, I love it i mean us working together it's 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 such an honor and a privilege that we have that um, that ability to do. It. I know a lot of married couples that just, they can't do it. They cannot work together, but I think it just, I don't know. We started that way when Pretty we first quick. met and it just has worked over the year or so. Yeah. yeah. We're lucky. A, yeah. a lot yeah. of it, a lot of it, I think also comes down to shared values, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because you're sharing values in the relationship, but then I guess, do you feel that you, I mean, you must, right. Have a similar mindset when it comes to your values in business building. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. aligned. I, yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's so important because without that aspect or that component, then, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't run. It just, yeah. you know, something happens, it stalls out. So yeah, we definitely, we've definitely dialed that in and not, you know, not to say that we don't have struggles and we don't bump up against yeah. each other because we do, but that's, that's normal. That's part of life. And, you know, we, we work through it and we, you know, talk through it and, you yeah. know, I agree with what she forward. says and we move forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's almost always roll. right. So I do, I, I follow what she says. Almost. There you go. Almost always. Almost. We almost. got that on recording, right? Yeah. We go back. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But it's always yes. it's always come naturally for us. Nice. That's what's weird. We've never had to work on it. It's just yeah. it's just natural. Um, I think just something about our personalities, like she said in the beginning, we've always I, we just we share the same values. We have the same outlook on everything. We mm -hmm. really do. I mean, we're both cancers. Um, just yeah. very similar that way. You Works resonate. Out good. You're in harmony. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you see this coupling um, and growing this business, Red Rock, together? How do you think that's benefited your clients, your emerging franchisors, your, your clients? Can they see that? Can they feel that? Can they get the benefit of that? Tell, tell me a little bit more about how that works in business for your clients. Well, I think they, they see that, like, you know, I talked about the franchise orders and like not having a process and that's a struggle. So they, they can see that we have like that dynamic, you know, just the offering that we bring. And so they see that we're aligned. They see that we have like a mission and the way that we want to structure our business and the way that we help others. And so that really comes across, I think, in our delivery. And so the franchisors see it, but then on the flip side, the consultants see it when we, you know, talk with them and, and we meet as a group and we have these discussions and these trainings and all that. They, they're like, you know, we will get feedback about, gosh, it's like, it's so amazing. Like just, you know, what we hear from you guys and like, 
you know, the just like the way that, you know, we position things and how we talk things out and the way that we kind of go to market, I guess, is, you know, it's very fluid for us because it just kind of all fits together. And I think that that really resonates with whoever we're talking to. I mean, hopefully yeah. you guys see that in the way that we kind of structure this conversation. I, I do see it. And the other thing I want to point out that we didn't talk about is you're modeling something for our franchisors because they're building a marriage in essence between them and their future franchisees. So you're modeling it in many ways of how they can partner and work together with their uh, franchisees. I hate this, but we're running up on the top of the hour, but I have one more question, Tracy, you probably do too. Um, Jason, describe Ari with three adjectives. How would you describe Ari? Hmm, I would say authentic, passionate, and beautiful inside and out. Look at, we got motion again. I love this. You are <laughs> badly in love. This is amazing. Well, she, she's just, she's just a very real person. Um, and I mean, she's the type, you know, I've said this so many times, you go on an airplane ride, a short airplane trip, 45 minute airplane ride. She knows the person next to, to her, sitting next to her at the end of that flight. It's, it's it become a new friend. I mean, she's just very engaging with people. Um, and so, yeah. Beautiful. All right. Like, is somebody cutting onions? Because my eyes are watering. I know, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Ari, describe your husband in three adjectives. Passionate. Um, focused. Mm -hmm. And th there's so many. Like, it's hard for me to... He, he's just, he's, we, you know, he's, he's like our leader. He's like our leader in business and our leader in life. Like he's just, he's, you know, he's the, the head of the family and the head of the, the, you know, what we built. Yeah. He's just, he's, you know, he's, he's like our King, you know, he just, he's the kids and me and everybody. We just, we look up to him for guidance and support and all things, you know? So it's, it's like, it's everything. It's business and life and family and future and all that all kind of combined into one magic, you know, pot. <laughs> all right, before I stop crying, God bless you guys. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Your business you. family. God bless it. That's Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Wow. Well, um, if you have a much older brother that's single, <laughs> you know, Jason, <laughs> Tracy's <laughs> taken. I'm free. <laughs> So this is so That's beautiful awesome. and I can see why you're building such a yeah. uh, beautiful business because it's, it's built on a strong foundation where Charlie taught you that you are ground level, you've built a strong foundation and you're growing because of that. You're like-minded as Tracy uh, pointed out, you share values, you respect and adore and love one another and you have similar uh, goals. So your ground level building up, and I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what what happens with Red Rock. Uh, I'm I'm expecting some incredible things out of you guys. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, we love it. We do. Yeah. Such a great business to be involved with. I I have a burning question. I just want to go back to Rick for one minute. His story about being burnt out in corporate America is. Yeah so relatable. And then you have your mentor, right, Jason, and what Rebecca just reminded us that he said to you about uh, being at ground level, what would you say to people in corporate America who feel burnt out, but stuck, and they don't realize they're at ground level? What would you say to them? Absolutely. That's a great question. I would just encourage them to jump into business ownership. I mean, I, I really would. It's, um, it's an, it's, it's, I don't know. It's complete freedom. It's it's a whole other experience owning your own business. And I look back at things, and it's like I'm so glad that I made that jump. And it was it was such a um, it was such a risk for us. It really was, you know, being that um, we have four kids, three of which are uh, well, one's already completed college, but two that we're gearing up to get ready to go to college, you know, and and having a family and so on, and taking on that risk of leaving corporate America, leaving 
insurance and, and 401k programs and all that stuff, leaving that yeah. behind and doing your own thing, controlling your own destiny. It's been remarkable for us. And I just, um, yeah, I mean, I know it's not the right move for everybody, but if you've ever thought about something you're interested in, you know, talk to people, jump into it. It's, um, it's, it's a great way to go. It really is control your own destiny. All right. And how do they get a hold of you? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> So our website is redrockbranddev.com. Is that right? Now that just took me by surprise. Yep. I was like, hold on a second. Yeah. Um, And so that, yep. And, uh, or you can email us, um, ari.obrien at redrockfran.com, jason at redrockfran.com. And yeah, I mean, we, you know, you can inquiry, through the website or you can email us directly and we're quick to respond. So awesome. Excellent. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you to thank both you for- of you um, yeah. for being when Ari and I talked and she was telling me the story over the phone the other day. I'm like, I, I want both of you on the show. Um, so thank you for making time for us today. We really, really appreciate it. And yeah. so do we. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us. Yeah, such an honor to be on the show. Absolutely. Tracy, do you have any wrap up for us today? Rebecca, you did such a great wrap up before. I mean, the two of you are just so aligned, so on a page, so passionate. And both of you are so authentic, knowledgeable, intelligent, you know, just thank you for what you bring to the industry and the awareness. You know, I definitely have a passion for emerging, you know, businesses, uh, emerging franchises. I love what you're doing. Keep up the amazing work. And, um, you know, it's only going to grow from here. You've done an amazing job in the past one year, right? I think you said uh, signing on eight. Is it eight under under your beautiful? Keep going. That's awesome. Congratulations on what you've created. Thank you. We appreciate it. And thank you to those listening in today to the Franchise Woman podcast where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships forged. Make sure to like, comment, share uh, this video with Ari and Jason O'Brien. And of course, tune in next week for another podcast.